Hi, good morning. It's Todd and Aaron. There's a certain level morning of irony stream. here. I'm Get part really daily. Like, wow. Thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Uh, this morning, man, we've got some stuff. Let's go see the mountain cam. Okay, yeah. Good morning, everybody on Facebook. The Morning Mountain Cam, of course, brought to you by Black Diamond Experts. That would be electric, plumbing, heating, and air. That looks ominous. It looks fuzzy, like maybe there's another forest fire. Did we miss one? No. Because there's been enough of them. By the way, for the next person who decides that burning something in a highly flammable like time of year is a good idea, maybe rethink that whole concept of, of what happened down at Brian Head. What happened? You remember the massive, gigantic fire? I do, I do. To, yeah, that one? That one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just maybe remember that next time. <gasps> Tell them. Tell I can't, them I can't them. find my story. Tell them about the fungi. Ew. You know you want to. I just got to tell you about this in Camas. There's a guy now. I, we've been up in Camas. We had a little cabin I fixed up up there. We've gone around. The woods are really pretty and stuff. And uh, up by uh, uh, Mirror Lake Highway, I have stumbled across some mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Not that kind. And when they come up, they come up really fast, you know, because that's the way mushrooms do. And anyway, so um, uh, wet spring, mm -hmm. more spores, more spores, more mushrooms. And I wish I had the name of this guy because it ends with Zinger because he's German living in a Swiss town of Camus area. And he goes out and he finds the biggest mushroom in the history of man. Really? No, not the history of man. Utah. But it's yeah. a really big, fat, gigantic mushroom. It's, he thought it was a tree stump. That's awesome. And guess who he took that record from? Who? His son. Mm -hmm. Evidently, they really like mushrooms. Fungi. Oh, and he didn't eat it; he froze it. Well, I would too. You have to Gu have proof. Guinness Book. Oh yeah, you have to have proof. Oh, that reminds me of one of my favorite jokes in the entire world. You ready? Okay, so two mushrooms walk into a bar and they sit down. They go, "Bartender, we would like your finest whiskey." And the bartender said, "You can't be in here." And they said, "Why? We're fungi." <laughs> oh come on, that's pretty good. There's the pathos of the mushrooms, and they can't get a drink. Cause Every not. time I hear it, it gets better and better. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there, there you jealous. go. So mm. large stump-like mushroom. Congratulations, fungi hunting family. That sounds delightful. We're All very right. happy for you. So update on uh, moving in. You've, if you've gone through this, you know uh, we're starting to settle in, um, which is nice. Aaron, show me your feet. Where are your shoes, Aaron? I had one pair of shoes that I hadn't packed, and those were my running shoes that I wore while we were doing our 14-hour move. And yesterday, I lost one of them somewhere in the house with all the packing material, and now I have officially no shoes. I spent an hour this morning trying to find any kind of footwear, and I have none, so I have to actually go buy some kind of flip-flop or something today before we go do filming. We're filming today with Fink and McGregor, by the way. So, so that was exciting. So I'm sitting here with bare feet, and the air conditioning is really good here at the studios. So the interesting thing is Aaron has no shoes, but yesterday managed to buy some throw pillows. Well, I had shoes then, and the gray, hideous gray sectional that you insisted I purchase for you was very gray. It needed some color. I made you buy a sectional? Yeah, because you were being pathetic about it. Okay, here's the deal. Have you ever seen a sectional in any kind of home decor magazine? No. Do you know why? Because they're hideous. They're comfortable. But the point is, Todd has been perching uncomfortably on like one of our kitchen stools for like the last 10 years, watching CNN and working on his computer. That's why I look like this. In acute discomfort. So, he and he has whined constantly, you know, a really a section would be really great. I don't think and I've then, whined. when we moved into the new house, he said, look at this broad, expansive living room. Wouldn't it be delightful if we had a sectional? The whole family could sit here together and watch movies and have popcorn. Wouldn't it be wholesome? Wouldn't it be family-like? It's for the children. Right. So, of course, Zoe and I went out and I found the big freaking sectional I could and I went is this the sectional you want he goes that would be great so we got the sectional sure enough it's eaten the entire living room but it's gray it's all gray so it needed a pop of color maybe you think about getting shoes first well I had shoes then I stopped making fun of my section I just okay. didn't have any shoes now Back oh, off, I could lady. wear sectional pillows oh, on my feet today holier than thou oh designer couches mm, uncomfortable couches yes sectional comfy 
Uh, first day on the job. First day on the job uh, in radio. What did you do the first day on your? In As your I job? recall, I screwed up constantly. I screwed is, up constantly. Is, is, you know that's that's traditionally what you do. Uh, there was one person here in uh, radio who actually started. I think it was his first morning at KSL, mm -hmm. and uh, he turned off the mic, and uh, the program director came in and said, "So, how was your first day?" And he goes, "It was a," and used the F word. He hadn't turned off the mic. KSL. That was also his last morning. There's no F in KSL. That is the last morning on your I'm ready See ya. KSL. Bye. Um, interesting. Interesting. I'm trying to think. I uh, worked uh, on a farm. Did dairy cows. Nothing. Just stepped in poo like you, you always do. things. Uh, yeah, we did that. It was fine. No problems. Uh, this guy had a, an interesting way of going about it. This is in New Jersey. Okay. In Fairfield, New Jersey. Yes. And a guy... Uh, Guy went. And he said, I, "You know, what I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to do something. I'm going to be security of some sort." All right. So he went down and he applied, and uh, they did his background check. Uh huh. They did his fingerprints. Sure. And everything checked out. Boom. He's in an office uniform. He's in a position of authority. He is. This is very exciting. Huh. He wears some sort of a badge. Uh, okay. Armor, armor car. Ooh. Right. That's pretty cool. Get you have to. Yeah, you have to have a really good background check for that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, on his first day, he took off with a hundred grand. So you got to admire him, his impulse. <laughs> I, I got to be honest. He had I, a plan. I know, but I would have waited a little longer for a bit more money. I mean, God bless you, honey. It, <laughs> it, it, if you're going to make off with an armored truck full of cash, a hundred grand doesn't really take you very far. Yeah, but he's young, so Wait he doesn't know. Wait for one know. of the big ones, you know, one of the big hauls, but he no. Doesn't, he doesn't know. So I'm... Guessing based on the mugshot that he was caught fairly quickly. Yeah, they got back out of a hundred thousand. They got uh, eighty-five thousand. What did he do with the other fifteen? He was making it rain <laughs> all over the town, which is probably how they caught him. <laughs> First day on the job. That is stinking hilarious. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> hey, he's can-do kind of guy. Oh my gosh, where's Bob? Where did he go? Why, dude? Why did you settle for a hundred grand? You had to have known that a Brinks truck carries a fairly large array of cash. And they had on video tape taking it. And I'm not, I, I'm not poo pooing a hundred grand. I'd be delighted to steal a hundred thousand dollars should it be offered to me. But I, I, I don't. You can't I've, steal I'll, something when it's offered to you. It's a gift. Oh, that's right. Never mind. Right. But, but, but if you're going to be driving a Brinks truck, you would know that there would be like millions of dollars. Right. Because right. we always hear those stories about the Brinks truck back. Doors opening and money going all over the freeway. My dream. I mean, like, repeatedly. So they must My have dream. terrible latches on those trucks. But, I mean, so we know they carry a lot. So we really you settle for a hundred grand. But see, the perfect thing about the story is no one was suspicious because it was his first day. All right. Why God you, bless you. Why? All right, tell me something good. I all think right, this is absolutely tell me gorgeous. Something. All right, there's... I can't even imagine what this family went through when when they lost their father. Um... This police officer uh, was recently killed in the line of duty. Uh, he was responding to a domestic violence call down in Jefferson County in uh, New York State. Uh, police hate domestic violence calls because, number one, they're there. They want to save the person who's, a, who's the victim. They want to save their kids. But it's always an incredibly wildly conflicted. Right. And there's a lot of danger on both sides. And it's, right. it's a really, it's a very tough call. And unfortunately, this is how this father lost his life. So... They were trying to think of what they could do. At the police association, there were 25, 35 police officers, and they were thinking, what can we do that would mean something to his family? Oh, to his family, right. Because it was a small fund, but they, you, you know what police officers make. It's not right. very much. Right. And they're thinking, what can we do that would actually matter? And they thought, okay, here's the deal. They knew that that uh, Joel Davis had been building a tree fort for his daughter, Julia. Oh, no. And, you know, a tree fort, like Zoe talks about it all the time. Yeah, tree really fort. Like, tree fort. you got to have a tree it's fort. That's very like, cool. It's a quintessential part of childhood. So he is. was building this tree fort, and uh, he lost his life. So in less than a day, the officers managed to put the entire tree fort together. Features like a ladder, windows, string of lights, a little balcony that you can see there. How blue cute flag. is that? A blue flag. And... Uh, and then they took a picture of it. So they sent it to her at school, and they said, when you get home, there's something waiting for you. Oh, my gosh. She came home, and there is her tree fort, mm -hmm. and 35 police officers and her mom, who's bawling. And here's the crying part for and us. And a brand new tree fort. Thank you once again. For your service. Very cool.
All right. So All coming right. up, coming up. Um, <sighs> gosh, we got so many things going on this morning. Well, let's um, go to Daisy first and right. get part daily news, and then we can re- we can re- you know weddings, recover ourselves. Weddings and guns. You had a lot of weird weddings and a guns. A lot of weird today. wedding stuff. All right. First, up. there's Daisy in the get part daily newsroom. It is brought to you, of course, by Fink and McGregor. Our friends at Fink and McGregor. If you go to finkandmcgregor.com, it's actually fink slash mcgregor.com. You can do the four minute mortgage challenge. It's ridiculously simple, and you'll realize why they say it's mortgage is made simple. Uh, number Number two, obviously, is executive transportation. If you would like a, one of their sweet escalates for a ride anywhere, literally, March has been anywhere, all you have to do to book your ride is go to executiveutah.com. And all Utah plumbing, heating, and air open 24 hours a day. If you've got an emergency, they are there for you. All Utahplumbing.com. Good morning, Miss Daisy. What is going on today? Hello, everyone. Here's what's making headlines Wednesday, August 2nd on GetPartDaily.com. The search for an elderly hiker missing since Monday in Summit County was scheduled to resume Wednesday morning. 74-year-old Melvin Heaps disappeared while hiking near Crystal Lake and has not been seen since. Search and rescue crews are scouring the area on horseback and from the air. Heaps' car was found at a nearby trailhead, but so far there's been no sign of the missing hiker. Members of the Duchesne County Sheriff's Office are mourning one of their own. The canine officer known as Q, who retired from the force just four days ago, was put down due to an aggressive form of cancer. The two-year-old Joan Shepherd had been partnered with Sheriff's Deputy Morant Harrison and was buried on Harrison's farm. Utah County officials have detected mosquitoes with the West Nile virus in ponds near Provo and North Springville. No signs of the disease turning up in people yet, but the health department is reminding everyone to minimize their exposure to mosquitoes by using deep-based repellents and to cover up when mosquitoes are most active around dawn and dusk. And it'll be another scorcher today along the Wasatch Front where temperatures will top out around 100 degrees under mostly sunny skies. Highs in the upper 90s Thursday and Friday with a chance of afternoon thunderstorms. That's it for now. Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right, so I got to tell you, uh, if there's a plumbing thing, we're in a new house. We're in a new house, and I got to tell you, um, what one great thing all Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air does is they'll walk through your house. Now, uh, even if you're renting, they'll walk to your house, and what they do is they look for faucet stuff. They look under the sinks, make sure the water turnoffs are good, nothing's dripping. They go down and make sure your water heater is going to work for you, the furnaces, including your AC, and your sprinklers. And they'll check everything you have going on and make sure it works right for you. And the nice thing about uh, all, all Utah plumbing, heating, and air is they fix it once. They don't mess around. There's no duct tape involved here. They're going to fix it. They're going to fix it once. If you want more information, just go to allutahplumbing.com. All right. I find this so weird. Um, we send our crew out to uh, go check out what the skateboarders are doing. And when you think of a skate park, what do you think? Well, it's Sandy think? Skate Park, and it's really cool. So you think there's going to be all those teenagers, you know, and they get yeah. the baggy, the baggy yeah. shorts yeah. on, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that at all. It was like this. Oh, it's uh, a hobby of mine that I've had pretty much about my whole life. And uh, I had some friends of mine that had the day off work too. So we all decided to come out and roll around, have a little bit of fun. How old are you? 47. It used to bother me, but it, it doesn't bother me anymore. I think if there's no age limit on skateboarding. If you're out having fun and doing what you want to do, then you should be able to do it. I know it is seen as more of a young person sport. There are all a bunch of young kids out here at the park, but uh, you know what? Us old guys can still get out and enjoy what we did in our childhoods. What does your wife say about this? She doesn't mind me doing it. She she thinks it's a good outlet for me to get out and uh, uh, get some exercise and to be able to do something that I enjoy. You know, I won't say it hasn't been without its fights at times. She has, you know, yelled at me about age before, you're too old and this and that, but she realized that it's, that it's a passion of mine and I'm going to do it whether she says to or not. So <laughs> I think now that I'm older, um, I think where the fights have come with is I've had um, some injuries. I had an ankle that I snapped and a, a shoulder that I dislocated a couple of years ago. 
and she wasn't real happy about me getting getting injured, which I do understand. But I, I am a little bit older, and I do understand that uh, I can't skate like I did 20 years ago. So I don't. I, I kind of found my own style, my own kind of surf style. I don't do the kick flip tricks and down the handrails and all that anymore. It's, that's long gone. <laughs> So all the older skaters out there, keep it up, man. It's, it's great to see that you're still out doing uh, what you do, your passion. There is no age limit. We'll be doing it till they pry the, the board off our cold dead feet. See? How that cool was, is that? That was sort of adorable. I'm sorry, but that really was. You know what's sad? With all those years of experience, mm -hmm. he chooses to protect his knees and not his head. Well, maybe that's because by by that time, there's really nothing left in our brains to protect. It's entirely possible. It's like, yeah, let's just protect what matters because I have to keep walking. Here comes Grandpa. Yeah. You know. You know how it is. All right. Okay, coming up in just oh, a couple of oh, minutes, oh, oh, all oh. the guns, all the weddings. This is weird. All together. It's coming up next. Todd and Aaron's Morning Stream, brought to you by Black Diamond Experts. Electric, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. You'll be glad you called an expert. Fink and McGregor, mortgage is made simple. Make sure you go to fink-mcgregor.com and try out their four-minute mortgage program. It's incredibly easy to find out whether you qualify. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. Back is the Todd and Aaron, it's Todd and Aaron morning stream. Oh, see, that's my story over there. That's gone. I'm looking for the wedding one. That one? No, that one. Anyway, well, so listen. This one to me. Listen, there's a designer person, and the designer person uh, decided that they wanted to make um, something special with uh, for women who needed uh, armament. This is what they came up with. They came up with holsters. Holsters, uh, holsters, okay. and more holsters. Um, that woman's also got pink handcuffs. Yes, she does. Yeah, she She's does. got pink handcuffs and a gun on her thigh. <laughs> yeah, stop it. Stop it with that sexy talk. Okay. All right. I, so I'm all I'm fine with concealed weapons permits. I'm I'm fine with concealed carry, but that uh -huh. seems really. Do you notice the dress excessively? On, the dress on the. Go back to the photo. Uh, tell me uh, if this doesn't look. Uh, the the photo on the left is the uh, wedding gown. And mm -hmm. on the right is the bridesmaid. Yeah, and she's got the handcuffs. So they've got uh, they've got matching uh, holsters. Yeah, that's super. Which that's falls sexy. into the, which falls into my next story, which is basically uh, and this happened in uh, Arizona, and uh, the police were called to a wedding, and uh, the moment um, these these couple got married and they went to their honeymoon suite motel, and evidently there was a problem. Some sort of altercation? She pulled a 9 millimeter and put it up against his head and pulled the trigger. Oh, would this be this one? They were at the Clarion Inn Motel? That's the one. Mm -hmm. it, the gun wasn't loaded. Well, but, see, that's but fortunate. Then she chambered around. Oh, that's the problem. Okay, so this cop showed up and they, they arrested her. How many yeah. hours was this? I mean, it was like no time. It was like three hours after that. She, but okay, twenty-five-year-old so. Elizabeth Pritchard was still in her wedding dress when she was arrested on aggravated domestic assault charges. So she must have had one of those, a holster for your th inner they thigh. They responded a report of them arguing at a Clarion Inn motel a few hours after they were married. Witnesses yeah. reported she pulled a nine-millimeter pistol out of her right. dress, pointing it at her husband's head and pulling the trigger out of her wedding dress. Gun wasn't loaded, so she then loaded around in the chamber and fired a shot in the air. Way to go, Annie Oakley! Woo, you show him, sister. All right, let's use our imaginations now and what could have gone that wrong in two hours. I do. The two hours later. The cake was dry. <laughs> the cake was dry. You call that a wedding singer? <clears throat> and right at the head, too. Not even like, you know, like I'm just going to pick it up and wildly wave it around, but I'm going straight for the headshot. And he didn't know it wasn't loaded. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's a text that you can't return. That is, that is... A, you know what I mean? That is a... You're not going to, he's not going to be able to return that text. He's not going to be able to do a lot of things. Wow. There goes the honeymoon. And you know her parents... But for her, it's okay. She'll be in prison. Yeah, so sort of. <laughs> And her parents are still crying because you know they're going to be paying for that wedding for the next 10 years. So that's great. It's either that or bail. 
That's wow. I mean, just, that's just to pull a gun out okay. in someone's how head is we, just like how scary. How about if we do? Let's do a palate cleanser, shall we? Let's. If we're talking weddings. Let's talk a nice wedding. Something nice. Okay. When it came for time for Marie, for Michelle to uh, choose a flower girl and a ring bearer for her wedding, the only kids that came to mind were her students because she's a teacher at IPS Butler Lab School. And she thought, okay, what the heck? I'm going to invite my entire class to be members of my wedding party. That is very cool. So 20 students walk down the aisle, all wearing white and carrying the garlands and flowers, and they're chucking out the flowers and holding nice. the pillows. She said, they mean the whole world to me. The kids and their families were part of the whole wedding planning process, and they gave me so much support along the way. They're a huge part of who I am, and it wouldn't have felt right if they hadn't been involved in my wedding. So That's the school cool. corporation said the students took great pride in their teacher's big day, and they all coordinated their outfits, you know, so that they're oh, all, funny. they'd all look good today. And for some, it was their first wedding. That reminds me of our Zoe, one of her preschool teachers actually proposed to another one of the preschool teachers up at the U at the in Miss Rachel's house and all the kids held the, held the signs that said would you marry me and so they were all invited this was her first wedding too she was very grown up right very grown up so this is adorable she she said I couldn't have done it without them and, and they were such an important part of it and she asked her her husband her groom if that would be all right and he goes well, we'd have to have them right which is why she fell in love and married him, because this man understands priorities. <laughs> 20 ring bearers and flower kids. 20 kids. rings. Oh, 20. I want to be a flower person that throws the flowers. That She's, looks like a fun job. Right, if you see the video, I mean, they're just like with great abandon. Exactly. They're shucking them in people's exactly. faces. Just the way you would walking, when you're a kindergarten. Walking with a pillow with a ring on it, not so cool. I don't know. They seem to be enjoying it, yeah. Casting petals. It was pretty cool. Hey, we were uh, we're going to talk about, uh, coming up later, uh, Senator Hatch, right? Eighth, eighth term. Uh, and uh, it's so funny, about 78%. Four times eight, 48, it would be 48 years. Yeah. 75% of Utahns say they don't want him to run again, but not, it's not the fact that they don't like what he's done. I think they're just fearful of him. They're tired? <laughs> they're tired for him. So anyway, we're going to go to the street on that coming up um Coming up a little later so we can get but some opinions out there. 78% of Utahns, 78 I mean, if you think about that, it's done by the Salt Lake Tribune, the University of Utah's Hinkley Institute of Politics. Longest ever serving GOP senator, and it's funny, he promised in 2012 that this current term would be his last. However, last March he announced he, that he changed his mind due to encouragement from President Donald Trump and who he said were top Republicans. Um, he, one Facebook commenter said, I guess it depends on who else is running if he's like the only choice I'd vote for him again. He's incredibly powerful. He's fourth in line for the presidency. He said, but there might be another one that, that was waiting in the wings. But he said, Hash came campaigning to my grandfather's door in 1978 <laughs> with term limits as a cornerstone issue. On a horse. 40 years later, that's a promise it looks like he never intended to keep. Oh my gosh. That's interesting though. I mean, it, it, and that has always been the long, longest running argument is like the guy's insanely powerful. Because he sits on all the committees. He's been there forever. And, 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 and he does well for Utah. That's you, always been his defense. And you and I have always been fond of him because we were heavily involved in a, a, a project with... Uh, he hugged me. No, he kissed you. When he I hugged ha me. When I have long hair, he hugged me. No, he, he he kisses Todd on the cheek when they meet. He hugs me. That's all I get. But Todd gets a kiss. Don't you remember Corey? Uh, there was a really full little family, and mm -hmm. she had a group of special needs kids, and mm -hmm. she wanted to adopt Corey. He was from Poland. Um, and they were having some troubles with the immigration issues. And we he went, jumped in. What the heck? So we called Senator Hatch's office, and he actually came on the show. He went through the whole thing. He ran some things through, and he, and he helped her adopt the boy. So, That's very cool. And we've always liked him since, just on principle. So. And, oh, plus, Aaron says, if we're ever taken uh, in, in, uh, as uh, If we were ever kidnapped as political hostages and we're being tortured by a car battery, would you make sure that somebody comes down and rescues us? And he said, <laughs> for you, Aaron, yes. For Todd, I might wait a couple of days. But So that was... 76% of Utahns don't work. All right. So anyway, that's interesting. So we'll, so, we'll see the man on the street poll on that later. All right, so, coming up. So well, wait a minute. Um, I want to talk about something here. Because, oh, what is that? Yeah, so um, in the preparation of the show, <laughs> like it's prepared, uh, um, we don't have Wi-Fi in our house yet that we just moved into, and it's been driving crazy. And so... Uh, oh, yeah, because you've been enjoying it. Crazy. Uh, and when, Our when children it, have been it, hugging their iPads and weeping. When are they coming? Softly. No, that was you. It was a mirror. Uh, what? Uh, when are they coming? Friday. Coming Friday. I actually went up, sat in the parking lot at <coughs> Shriners Children's Hospital, so I could use their Wi-Fi. It's not secured. Their Wi-Fi? Well, that's where you went. Mm-hmm. I told you so, I was going for a run. Didn't you wonder when I was taking my iPad with me and my charger? 
What are you plug into like one of the lamp posts out there? Yeah, they have all those benches there. It's You're really smart. It was very. It, no, no one bothered me. Okay. Got some work done. So what I've been doing uh, and we've been doing is going to restaurants that have Wi-Fi. Now I got to tell you, first off, I hate seeing families online. It technically looks like dinner. family time when we're there. No, it looks like I'm the worst dad in the world. I get a laptop open. I'm going through. I'm not looking at the kids. I'm not talking to the kids. Kids reaching for a pot sticker, slap that hand back, and get back to work. Zachy and, and I were dancing, and you didn't even look up. We were doing the running man in the riddle of no middle of noodles and company, and you did not company. even look up. Now, here's the, the thing. Uh, I did started at the children's area at McDonald's the other night. That which, was, okay, I, I would just like to say in retrospect that that was creepy. Yeah. It's 1030 at night, and you're sitting there with a laptop in the kids' section by the ball crawl at McDonald's. I didn't in think retrospect, it, looking back on that, would you see where some parents would go, what's the creepy guy with the laptop doing? It was 10 o'clock at night. There were no kids. But yeah, that's creepy. So I suddenly realized why their Wi-Fi runs so slow is because you'll eat more. You know, because we did, um, I did alone McDonald's, and then we all went down Noodles and Company. Once again, slow internet, and then uh, and you're like, okay, I'll have the pie. They just, they beat you down with it. And so basically, what time is he coming on Friday? 10 to 12, 10 to 12, 10 to 12. We'll be there. We'll okay. be there waiting with open arms, I, uh, Xfinity. We'll I, be right there with open arms I, for you. I have gained uh, five pounds since we don't have Wi-Fi. So, uh, yeah, the kids have been eating out a lot, though, so they can't complain. Yeah, so don't... When, when on Friday? 10 to noon. Nice. 10 to noon, Xfinity. Hey, We're United there. Airlines just got topped. We'll explain how coming up next. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and GetPartDaily.com? All right, so this, uh, when I said I said United Airlines, it really has nothing to do with United Airlines. It has to do with another uh, group. And uh, basically, uh, France 293, carrying 323 souls aboard from Paris to Tokyo. Kind of had a coincidence kind of thing. How so? North Korea, ballistic missile. Wow. So the airliner it goes That's passes, a problem. passes directly over the Japanese sea where the rocket lands, and they missed it by 10 minutes. Not that it would have hit necessarily the plane, but it's the whole thought Concept. behind a and ballistic again, missile and an airplane. Well, we're also talking a relative wild card here when it's North Korea, because you really don't, don't know. know what's going to happen yeah, with it. Maybe they were. It could pop up and in a dozen thousand turquoise birds could fly out singing happy birthday, or it could be a nuclear warhead. You just, you're never sure. We don't know. When it comes to North Korea. So they have it could gotten, be anything. they have gotten, uh, they have gotten uh, complaints about this before from China, uh, where a month ago, uh, the same thing happened. So maybe there is a coincidence. You know, so, sadly, China's the only one that actually really likes North Korea anymore. And when they're saying, we prefer you not fire missiles into our oceans, then you're thinking these, this is really not a country that cares if it has friends or not. It's okay, though, because the, the rest of the countries have decided to send a stern warning. And if that doesn't work, there will be another sharply worded letter. With large block letters. Stop it, North Korea. All That's right, what else? Be fun. All right, well, let's go to Daisy. She's got more global headlines. She's in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Mortgage is made simple. All you have to do is go to fink mcgregorcom He's got a million different choices. You're going to find two or three that are a perfect fit for you. Executive transportation, where our friend March can take you across the country or just to the airport in one of his sweet escalates. Uh, just go to executiveutah.com to book your ride. And Black Diamond Experts, that's electric, plumbing, heating, and air, 24-hour service, because they know it's usually two in the morning when there's some kind of a problem in the house. Just go to blackdiamondexpert.com. Good morning, Miss Daisy. What is going on? Hello again, Todd and Aaron. Here's a look at national and world headlines on GebhardtDaily.com. A University of Idaho professor is dead after being struck by lightning while climbing in the Alps. 
41-year-old Samantha Ramsey was the widow of Seattle Mariners pitcher Robert Ramsey, who died of brain cancer in August 2016. Samantha had traveled to the Alps to mark the one-year anniversary of her husband's passing. They leave two children, ages 12 and 9. A French commercial airliner flew near the airspace when North Korea's North Korea conducted its most recent ballistic missile test. The Air France jet, which was carrying more than 300 passengers, flew through the area just 10 minutes before the North Korean test. And the U.S. has a new FBI director. Christopher Wray was confirmed by the Senate Tuesday, filling a post left vacant since May when Donald Trump fired James Comey. The vote was 92 to 5. That's a quick look at world and national news. You can get all the day's headlines 24-7 on GebhardtDaily.com. Todd Naren, back to you. Good morning. Welcome back to the Todd Naren Morning Stream, GebhardtDaily.com. Prison, prison break. First of all, let me tell you about Black Diamond while you're looking at oh, the yeah, story. Go ahead. This is pretty good. Yeah. We were talking about Black Diamond experts. Now, this is electric plumbing, heating, and air. Um, it's been very fun because I've talked to a couple of people who actually paid attention when I was saying, hey, this is a really good company. And so I talked to my girlfriend afterwards and said, how did it go? She'd moved into a new house, and I guess there was like a pile of problems. And so she said, come on over. I've got a laundry list of stuff. And I, I don't know. I, I guess as a woman, I'm always paranoid. That, like service people think I'm an idiot. And well, technically with plumbing and electrical, I am. And they're going to come and go, yeah, this thing's broken. You need bunches of those things too. But she said this guy came in. He was awesome. Uh, wiped his shoes, put on his booties. And she's like, that's not really necessary. He goes, yes, it is. So he came in. He went through the house. And he was going through all the projects she needed. And there was, I guess there was like six. Wrote everything out. Then he went and made a few calls, did a bid. And he goes, this is what it's going to be. She goes, well, that's pretty good. Are you sure? And he went, yeah. So they came back the next day. They brought three different people. They went through the entire house, got everything fixed, handed her the bill, and it was, once again, exactly what the bid said because that's what they do. There's no there's no upcharges. There's no little extra special hidden fees. There's no nasty surprises at the end. It's just everything is fixed, and it's what they quoted you, and that's what you pay. Now, I, I really like these guys. So if you want to talk to them, maybe get some ideas. If you have some estimates or something you need, it's blackdiamondexpert.com. All right, I now take you inside a prison and people trying to get outside of prison. Uh, here are the inmates who uh, actually es uh, escaped. And basically, you know what they did? There's a good looking bunch of people. Uh, another group. Well, that one little Orange is, is the new black, by the way. It's true. Oh, I like the one who's smiling. And right. the, the kid down there on the right, left is doing the, I mean, in the lower right is doing the glamour shot pose. It's nice. Oh, head, head to the side. So the deal they is. They naturally happy Guess about how they this got out. Thing. Guess how they got out. Explain. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. How'd they get out with peanut butter? Peanut butter. So uh, basically it was time for everybody to go back in their cells and one of the guys wanted to go back earlier and he said, hey, can you open up number blah, right? Well, they took the peanut butter and they covered up one of the numbers. So the guard actually opened the wrong door. He opened the door to the outside. That's pure evil. Who would even think of that? And so they're all going, it worked. Now what do we do? So they grabbed their blankets and they just, uh, uh, those young men, uh, kind of walked down to the yard and this is in Alabama and uh, they threw their blankets over the razor wire and they climbed up and over and they got a truck and they drove away. Here's the problem. Wow, that's, I mean, that's rather ingenious. Peanut butter. Here's the problem. Peanut butter. The word went out that these 12 inmates were out there and they offered a reward and evidently Either everyone in these towns wants to be McGruff the crime dog. Or they didn't really like him that much in the first or place. Or they just wanted some cash because they went on a manhunt. No <laughs> way, really? It was just like, hey, Bob's got one. He got five grand. Let's all go. And so everyone was... Go get your dog. Come on. This is going to be fun. <laughs> everyone went out into the, into the community and they were like turning people in left and right. Some guys like gave up because these Mom, crowds were coming at him. You like, seriously just, called on me? Yeah. So the police that could, is so sad. Seriously. The police could just sit back and go, there's a reward. Go get them. We'll be here. Bring them here. So I'm guessing satellite TV was out in that town that night and figured, you know, what else is so going they, on? They, they said, we were kind of surprised, but, you know, we put a value on them. Uh, we reward. Uh, they uh, kind of went crazy on us. So they caught them all. That's that is, it. I mean, not that I approve of them actually escaping, but that was so ingenious. I know. And then you go home to your hometown. What? I have something to tell you next. Really? Be strong for me. It's coming up next. 
We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and GephardDaily.com? All right, so it's time for me to be truthful You're with you. You're making me have a certain level of anxiety here, but let's go for it. All right. So, uh, we had talked about this the other day, and uh, I just want to say that... Uh, what did we talk about? First of all, it didn't mean anything to me. It di didn't mean anything. It was nothing. What didn't mean anything to you? I went to the KFC buffet alone. You cheated on me? Didn't mean anything, hon. You cheated on me? The extra, extra crispy. You even ate the extra crispy without me? Yeah, I did. You don't even like the extra crispy. I know. You're an original formula guy. You ate without me? 39th and State, it's a buffet. I bet day. you had the chicken fried steak, too, because it was yeah. Tuesday, didn't you? Yeah. Mashed potatoes, gravy, coleslaw, not into the biscuits. Okay, we're down to one car right now because Todd's car is in the shop. So let me just rephrase this. You took my car and left me at home with the children, and you went to the KFC buffet by yourself. It was research. I was doing research on chicken and Kentucky. <laughs> so that's where I went. And the $11, all you can eat. Ugh. That's why I didn't eat dinner last night. What kind of a man are you? <laughs> you went for the Wi-Fi, right? This is your fault! No, I didn't This go is for your the... fault. You told him about it, and I, I... I'm blaming you for the end of my marriage. I, I didn't... You! Wow. Uh, it is wow, your right? fault, pal. <clears throat> no, no, no. You, know, you, you could have cheated on me with a Playboy bunny, and I could have lived through that, but you cheated on me with food. <sighs> I think we've all learned a with lesson food. here. He it's called keep your mouth shut. How could you have gone... How could you have gone to the... Can the, the without me. You know how I feel about Kentucky Fried Chicken. It just came over me. I was uh, being um, spontaneous. It's not funny. You stop laughing. <laughs> I'm going to come back and hit both of you. It's not a court. There's not a, it's not a judge in the land. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. It was horrible. What um, else did you get? Did you, did you get the coleslaw and the biscuits? You don't even like the biscuits. I only had two. So, that's why I'm shaped like this now. Thank you. I can't believe you cheated on me. Let's just move you on. Know, if it had been another woman, it wouldn't have mattered, but you cheated on me with food. There was a lady there. With food. There was you a lady there cheated on me with food. Named Barbara. I don't care. She's like 60. Was she eating extra crispy too? I don't care. No, she was filling the trays. Every man in that room was in love with her. I don't know if just, I can ever look at just, you the same way again. She just kept bringing chicken out like that. It's like I don't even know who you are. I don't even know who you are right now. All right. I don't think I can finish the show. I might have to leave now. You can't. They're not open yet. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? I got the car keys. I can wait. Okay. Conspiracy theories. Let's go on to something else. I really can't else. believe you did that to me. I know. So basically they're telling NASA to put up or shut up. These are the people who said the, the moon landing was a hoax. And they will not, it's, it, it was just the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong and uh, on the lunar surface. And <clears throat> Marcus Allen is one of the nuts, I mean the guys who kind of does the theory, the, 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 the conspiracy. Don't touch me. Oh, let's get over this. No, don't touch me, go on. Okay, so anyway, uh, they said you gotta prove it. And NASA's going, well, we, are, we already did it. We went to the moon 50 years ago. What's, what's the problem with this? And they said, no, because they, they talk about shadows and there's a double shadow and then they're talking about this, that, and the fact that the flag's waving, it's not, it's just crumpled from being stored and then they put a stick up to hold it out. And some people say you can't use a glove when it's in a vacuum, which they make these little contraptions to show you, and it's stupid. And they're actually, actually, they did go to the moon. Here, and here's, here's the bad thing, is that NASA, NASA said, uh, said, yeah, we went. And they said, no, you couldn't have gone because of, of, of Van, what's his face's, oh, um, 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 hang on one second, I'll get it. Uh, because of Van Ness B belt, hang on one second. Oh, Van Allen's belt, <clears throat> which is a 
radioactive stream around particles around mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the earth. Mm -hmm. I never heard of it before. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. It's part of the electromagnetic field. So what they're saying is if you draw, if you rocket through it, you'll die. No. Well, no, that's what they say. They, well, there's no. no way. They had no radiation suits or anything. They were going to die when they went through it on the way to the moon, which kind of puts a poo-poo on Mars. No, that's not possible. It's not possible? No, there's a myriad of different exposures to radiation, especially in they space. Say, it's they not say, be first and the last thing they, they go through. They say you're crazy, because this is one of the main reasons why anybody who flies through that is going to die in a couple weeks. Well, no! It, that's, okay, that's not the element of, of okay, that's not the, the element of radiation you would need in order for immediate fatality. Number two, there is still shielding on a space shuttle. So no, that's not... They, Do you believe they went to the moon? Of course they did. Dude, they're saying that uh, JFK wanted to beat the Russians so bad that they went to a secret location, built a secret studio, and then made a sick, secret uh, uh, deals on this, videos on this. I, can, I hate to tell you this, but you know what? The special effects weren't that good in the 60s. Faking it would have been much harder than actually that, filming the real that's thing. That's why, because the, the pictures weren't that great in that way. And when they showed them stepping off the limb and stuff like that, it was just like, you know... Like, if it was clear, you'd see, like, a lamp in the background or a, a dog or something. There could be dogs on, on the moon. Hey, do you want to go um, to lunch today? I don't even want to talk to you anymore. Okay, this is really the most bizarre thing ever. Let's say that you're having, like, the worst year of your life. That would be the Coates family. First of all, their father, and, and I love the way this is put in this article, the family had been going through a string of unfortunate events. Her husband had robbed a bank. So their family had lost their home after I, he went to jail. I have a, I have a comment. Yeah. Uh, an event is, isn't something that you cause. An unfortunate event. No. Well, okay, but I would like to point out... An event out is your house burns. Uh, well, an event okay, is but, a celebration. Okay. An event of getting caught while robbing is not an event. It's a circumstance of sorts. I okay, well, let's just say that for Tawny Coates, who was the wife and the mom... It was an unfortunate event because her husband's gone to jail. She's lost her house. Yeah, uh, they're because living with of her him. dad. And, uh, Something he did. And Zoe, who was their dog, their family dog, who right. they, they love more. You know, the kids love more than life stuff. Because he's like stuck Zoe. with them through all this crazy. It's like it's like Zoe and Gil. You know, it's like your best friend. Mm. And so their their pet boxer had started getting really sick, started having seizures, a lot of problems. They finally took her to the vet, and they found out that there was a large mass on Zoe's side, a big oh. tumor. And so they're having this. They're like, you got to be kidding me. And there's just grief and their misery. And the doctor's like, this is, this is gigantic it. mass, seizures. This is it. And so they say, oh, okay, we're going to have to euthanize her. Because, and you know, the, anyone who's done this with a pet, you know this is like the hardest uh, possible thing you can ever do. Uh, that you're holding your baby and, and the you're saying goodbye. The only thing you can think of is all dogs go to heaven. The great and movie. Th that's a good picture. It yeah, is. right there. See? They're in heaven. Because they're they happy. do. They all go over the rainbow bridge and they're in heaven. Okay. So they went, okay, that's it's painful, but we... You know, so we, we, we held, you know, we love yeah, her. and they went and, through it. You know, she doesn't have to suffer anymore, except for six months later. Six months later, what? Tawny was looking on one of these websites about boxers because she was thinking, maybe I could get the kids another boxer, another dog. And six months later, after losing Zoe, no. she felt like, okay, maybe we're ready to get another dog. No. So she's looking on the website, and it's a rescue home for boxers. And she looks at one picture, she goes, Shut up. She goes, that's Zoe. That's the dog. Our, that's our boxer, Zoe. And she goes, I've got to be insane. I've got to be clinically insane. So she grabbed it and went and, and, and showed it to her dad and right. said, this is Zoe, right? And he goes, that can't be correct. They can't be. So they actually contacted the home. They got a picture. They, looked, they, they went there. The dog is Zoe, jumping up and down, happy as can be, scar on her side where there had been the mass. Oh, my gosh. So the next step, of course, is they go back to Dr. Mary Smart, who is the veterinarian. Hey, Smart. And said, Dr. Mary Smart, you, you had told us the dog needed to be euthanized. You said the dog needed to be put down. We gave you $215 for Zoe's euthanasia and cremation. And she said, well, you know, I'd looked at the dog after, and it didn't seem like you really cared about her that much, like you weren't really worked up. So I used the money instead to remove the tumor, and then I sent her to a rescue home, because you didn't seem like you were that fond of her. And she goes, I didn't, and, she, and this is her phrase, which to me sounds like something your lawyer wrote. In my professional opinion, this was a dog that had years to live, and I didn't want to put the dog down. 
I was trying to save its life. Had I any inkling that they might have all been interested in having the dog back, but I would have for sure called. Um, you, you just paid for your dog to be put down. I'm baffled. In grief, you know, and you're all crying. The kids are standing in your office, Dr. Mary Smart, bawling. Right. And you... They don't really think, like the dog. Didn't. And poor Tom, poor Tony said, this kind of feels like the final step to the worst year of our life. But on the bright side, they did get Zoe back. So that's, that's the one happy note. But it's like, what veterinarian goes, yeah, that dog's... That dog's got the mass, and, you know and then it goes. Weird. You know, I've I've changed my mind. The dog should live, and I don't I don't think you want him so, back. So, so the weird thing is, who is that does that? There's the yin and the yang. The bad yang is, uh, or the bad yin. You decide. Uh, is the fact that uh, the the woman lied to them about putting their dog down? That is like the and weirdest yet, thing ever. And yet, healed the dog, and then put the dog in a home didn't sell the dog, put the dog in a home. So it's like, I lie to the family, I take care of, get healthy, give it to a home so somebody else can have it. Anybody but them. You must have really not liked that family. I think some vet is into the medicine cabinet, that's what I think. That is, but I just love her phrasing, had I any inkling they wanted the dog back? Well, you know, if they had paid all this money, and this is a family who's lost their home, so it's not like they're rolling in cash. If they had paid all this money to have the dog put down in a humane fashion and, and cremated, that I'm guessing they probably were pretty fond of the dog. <laughs> had I any inkling at all, they wanted him back. It's like, well, Don't yeah, they take they, an oath? Don't they take a Hippocratic oath just like doctors do? I would think so because, boy, being a vet, it takes almost, do, as, I think it's just as much training as it is for a, a human doctor. Is it? I think so. It's, it takes a long freaking time to be a to veterinarian. To be a vet? Interesting. So you would think, that would just seem like the weirdest story. But on the bright side, the Coast family does have Zoe back, so that's one bright spot. And ideally, after the lawsuit, they might be able to buy a new home. They need a new home because they burned down, you see, because he robbed the bet. Never mind. I got a call. We got a call the other day from friends of ours, and they came out and visited us right here. And they swear that Salt Lake City is the Wild West. Because <laughs> we live next to the foothills. We walk like half a block and boom, you're in the woods. Well, I, I mean, keep sending the pictures like, oh, crap, here's the rattlesnake I almost stepped on. Oh, look at this. Was, deer. Oh, deer, on, deer on our front yard. Here's a badger. And so our friends are like, think like we're like either frontiers that, people. Or either they think we've got like some sort of stunt, you know, animal person who keeps like launching animals at us for photo ops. But so, no, they, we, so they picked up this news, this news article uh, on one of the national sites. <laughs> They called up and said, um, there, there, there's a cougar in downtown Salt Lake City? Proving their point that we are pioneers people. There's not a cougar in downtown Salt Lake City. Yeah, there was. Uh, one of the Gold Cross ambulance guys, they were sitting there, you know, they kind of stake out an area going, oh, I think someone will get hurt here. And they kind of hang out and wait. And all of a sudden, uh, Mountain Lion comes walking across 15 South and 500 East. Sixth East and South Temple. That's where it moved to. Sixth East and South Temple. Okay, let's think of it. So, whoa, geez. 3 a.m. <laughs> That's close to our house. I know. 3 a.m. Tuesday. And it was just strolling around. Right. There's a young male, probably just separated from its gang and uh, looking at a new hood. And I thought it would go downtown. So but... they, cor they cornered the thing. And so my friend's laughing. They're, they're laughing their butts off because there's like, see, I told you. You got cougars running through your neighborhoods, and uh, so basically downtown. Wait, downtown. Isn't, this the, isn't this like the second mountain lion they've had downtown this year? There. Third, no way. No, you see the other picture by the university. You know the pedestrian bridge that goes yeah, over yeah, yeah. just down yeah, yeah. the hill from the hospital. Yeah, they've got this great shot of this like nine footer, just strolling on the grass, and you're like, holy! So if you're walking around campus at night, hello. We had deer run through our front yard yesterday in the middle afternoon. So they're right. We do live in the Wild West, downtown Cougars. This is the third sighting That's crazy. of, a, of Mountain so, Lake downtown. And unfortunately, this one didn't end well because they cornered it. Yeah, so it charged, right? Yeah. yeah. They trank I missed. And so they had to put the, the animal down, which is really sad. But yeah, so my friends think that we do live, you know, like cavemen back here. At this here. point, we apparently really do. I Evidently, mean, it's hard to argue with that, right? All right, so I want to thank you uh, for 
Oh, first of all, uh, go on our Facebook, uh, and I need more suggestions of what restaurants have Wi-Fi. And um, I'd like something savory. The people at McDonald's said that we can't let him come back there I don't anymore. Want, I want to step it up, you know. A Mexican restaurant would be good, uh, whatever. Just go on Facebook and let us and know. And if you could let us know the internet speed, that would be helpful, too. Some of them are real slow. And I'm not trying to be selfish, but it's just if you could tell us some faster than... When I, when I look at a story and the URL comes up, I don't even wait because it's so slow. I don't even wait for the story to print out. I have to guess by the liner, by the URL. It's like a uh, donkey, mm, uh, cheeseburger, mm, uh, avalanche. Boom. And then I see what I get the next morning. It's great. So anyway, thanks so much. Uh, once again, is Hatch going to run for an eighth term? We don't know, but we went to the streets and we asked you. You guys have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow morning on the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream on GetPartDaily.com. What do you think of Orrin Hatch? <laughs> what, what, what do you think of Orrin Hatch running for Senate? I don't even know who that is. Never heard of him. Isn't he dead? Is he, like, dead or I don't know? I don't know much about the guy, but he already... Just the name sounds very douche, like a tyrant, I don't know. It, as long as his mind is working and he isn't doing anything crooked or anything illegal, uh, yeah, he should run for office. What do you think of Orrin Hatch running? I don't even know who he is. Orrin Hatch is a worthless piece of I think a lot of people think he's been in office too long. 40? That's like half his life. I remember six years ago when he said it'd be his last term. Uh, he might be dead before he even makes office thinking of how old he is. He originally ran on term limits and you gotta imagine six years from now he's running for another term. And here we are six years later he's running for another term. Kind wow, of, yeah, he, yeah, he, he needs to retire. Him. He is a period. I think there definitely should be term limits on the Senate. Isn't he a senator here or something? As long as he's still functional, you know, he, he's able to do his job, you know. With professionalism, you know, I think he's, he will do a good job. Well, why don't they put someone new in the office and get Hatch out of there? He's not really doing anything for us anyway. What do you think of Orrin Hatch running for Senate? <laughs> Orrin Hatch is a Mormon. I don't, I don't know who that is. His time is coming to a short end, and he should enjoy life with his family and not have to sit in an office all day, every day. What do you think of Orrin Hatch running for Senate? No, no comment. I'd say he's out of touch, yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of new issues popping up in the world that he's probably very unfamiliar with, and we need people who know what they're talking about with the situations, so. Don't you think he's a bit old? Super old. I bet he's got a nicer house than I freaking do. That is far too long. They should they should really let someone, I mean, I guess they could let, keep letting him do it, though, because he could, he's probably going to die off soon enough that they might as well just let him live it out happy. He has set records for the longest serving Republican senator in history of this country, so that does tell you something. So I'm not surprised, bit disappointed, but not surprised.